Hello everyone. Hi, hi Cibi. Hi, Welcome Cibi. back to another episode of Tuzamen. Hello, hi Cibi. Cibi. Thank you so much. <laughs> and hi, Joshua Sobol. Hello. Which hi. is an icon. Yes. But not only here, all over the world. All over the world. Right? Even in, in, you know, in New York, he was in the public theater, right? Yes. Public theater. Yeah. Joshua I, uh, Sobol, different I playwright, in. publicist, writer, a political figure. Right. Um, what else? Uh, did Joshua. you write? Uh, did you write lyrics, songs? Uh, I wrote songs, and uh, recently I wrote eighteen songs about uh, King David's love affairs. Oh, or, so it's a or, musical. Or his, it's a musical. It's a kind of a musical. Uh, yeah, uh, Ayala Asherov is uh, composed the music for it, and we perform it with five. Uh, Ayala Asherov. Ah. Okay. Um, and we com- uh, we perform it with five uh, musicians, all young women, uh, a violinist, a cello, a flute, a pianist, and a snare. And the two singers are uh, Eli Gornstein and Karen Hadar. Uh, so plays, it's a, it's a musical or drama. It with is not. Songs? It is not exactly a musical. No, it is um, a musical event. Okay. Uh, so to speak, it's like uh, a performing, rather, a performing it's, a, cap- it's a, a performance, of course, and uh, no, I asked it, it, like it, it has a character. Art. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it has the character of a chamber chamber concert with the two singers, and uh, they play a bit also along uh, by uh, yeah. while performing the songs. Yeah. Wow. And so so Ellie is the king. Ellie is the king, and Karen Hadar plays uh, Michal. Okay. Uh, and Bacheva. Oh, wow. I just and saw him, by the way, because I saw uh, on, in the editing room, Michal Batadam, new film, and he's mm-hmm. doing a fantastic role in, in the film. Yes. He's really wonderful there. Yeah. Well, well, he's, he's, a, a, he's, an, a, he's a very, playing, very uh, front special front. actor. Yes, yeah. it really. But why did you write about King David Loves? Uh, because, uh, well, I wrote it, uh, I started to write it uh, a few years ago. I became interested in his character when in Israel, uh, you know, there was, a, uh, um, I would say, a big drama about the changing of power in, in our country, uh, replacing Benjamin Netanyahu, and we had three or four uh, campaigns, one after the other. And uh, all of a sudden, I remembered that uh, King David didn't stick to his throne. Uh, he gave it up uh, during his life. He uh, passed it on to Solomon, to Shlomo, King Solomon. And uh, in, in my play, at least, uh, Solomon says, Father, a king does not abdict, uh, abdicate his, uh, pa- his uh, power. And David answers in my play and in the songs, say, what is power? What does it mean? It means nothing. Love counts much more. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> and he says, uh, if anything will be remembered for me, these are four words in Hebrew, yain yesamach levav enosh, which right. means wine um, uh, uh, fills yeah. the human heart with joy. Right. And uh, he says that this is more important than all the battles that I fought and all the victories that I had and so on and so forth. So I thought it was a good idea to bring this aspect of King David and, and to put it on the, so to speak, on the carpet or on the table and to ask our audience to reconsider the whole question of why do people stick so much and right. hold on to power when, when, when the time comes for them to live and to say goodbye and maybe there's something more important in their life uh, than uh, holding on to power. So what makes, it's, it's, it's really very few people give, give up power. Most of them are not able to, why? You're right, you're right. But I think that this is what is so special about uh, King David. Twice he was ready to give up the power. Once when Absalom uh, made his uh, revolt uh, or his, uh, yeah, he was a, re- a rebel and tried to overthrow David and uh, David's uh, chief of staff comes to him, Yoab, and says, I can, I can finish them off in uh, no time, these rebels. They are nothing. They are rubble. And David said, no, 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 no. Let's go to the desert. Let's run away from Jerusalem. In a way, he hopes that Absalom will take over and he will get rid of power. 
And you know, uh, uh, David, he is the most, uh, I, I think he occupies in the Old Testament, in the Bible, the uh, a major part because all the Tehillim, the Psalms, uh, are uh, referred to or uh, to him as if he wrote it. Right. He is considered to be the the poet of uh, Psalms, part of uh, Book of Kings and King, and Book of Samuel uh, deal with David and his exploits. So I I wondered why did the uh, the Jewish people adopt him as uh, the epitome of a good king or of uh, an ideal king, David. It's really weird. And you know, yeah, one of the interesting things is that after he killed Goliath, he never killed any other person with his hands. So, yeah, but he uh, sent somebody to get killed. He sent somebody, yes, yeah, so here and there, he fought many battles. He fought, he battles fought many battles, him. but he sent Bathsheba, uh, Bathsheba's husband to get killed. So he can have that's her. an interesting question you know um in the in, in our uh, in the love poems that i wrote um he he calls well as it is written in the city stored in the bible he calls oriah from uh, the battlefield and says go to your wife and your Uriah uh, refuses he stays on the stairs of the of the palace and says, send me back to my comrades, so to speak. Right. And then I have a rap, a kind of rap uh, performed by uh, Batsheva. Well, she complains. She says, you know, uh, he loved the war more than, more than me. Uh, more than me. And he and his friends, they, uh, they spend a, a good time in war. They come back, they get together. They congregate and they tell their stories to one another and they enjoy their memories. And we, women, we are left to dry up. And she says, I'm young. <laughs> I didn't want to dry up. And uh, so... Um, she is modern, but, yes, but it seems like you were a bit forgiving to David and you put it a little bit on the girls. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 because David, well, he says there, I sinned, I sinned, etc., etc., and she says to him, you did not sin. And in Hebrew, uh, she says, Tov lichiot chayei chet, mi lichiot chayei met. Which wow. means it, <laughs> it's wow. better to live, <laughs> to live as a sinner than to live as a dead person. Right. I, then, I don't want to. I don't. I, I. I. think I'm not even supposed to say, but I will say. Do you know that I? I don't know if I even should say this publicly, but because of what you said, that I. I, I had women who were not yes. happy, and I said you. You deserve happiness, and yes. if, if, and if you have to stay in the relationship, either because he is a nice guy, but what can you do? You are not really in love. No. Just do it quietly. As we well, uh, quietly that he, but you have to you have to make it be happy, and if you need to sin, as we say, you know, mm -hmm. like have a love affair, that's fine. It's between you and you, you don't have to. Well, it, it is uh, well with David and Bathsheba. It's not a love affair. It's a real love. Uh, it's a. <laughs> oh yeah, I meant real love. I meant real. Love. Uh, well, it's a major. Uh, well, they are both of them. They are not ch not children anymore. I mean, they are yes. not youngsters. Yes. They are uh, David. I don't know how old he is when he has uh, when he falls in love with Bathsheba, but uh, they are people in their the ripe people. Yes, uh, in the bloom of her, of their uh, life, and I think that this is something that is. Uh, um, it's not provocative, but it uh, makes you think that maybe David was ready to give up everything for his love with Bacheva. He was ready to give even... Like this uh, king of, uh, of England, what's his name? Uh, yeah, like the king of England. Right. Yes, of course. Uh, was it uh, George V? I think I yeah. don't remember. Yeah. Which I'm, envy yeah. I'm envious, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm envious, the power of true love. Because when you look what happens with that love for God, how much mm. wars and damage and misery, no. um, you know, the love of God, as we say, you know, which, yes, yes. which, which people are willing to kill themselves for that love. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. to gain what? But, you know, we, I'm not I'm like what you said, you know, sometimes, you know, you can kill for love, but it's something different. 
But not so many people who pay the price. I don't think that people kill for love. They they kill because uh, they are envious or jealous, yeah. and jealousy and envy have to do with hatred, not with love. I yeah. think that uh, yeah. when someone is going to kill for, for love, so to speak, uh, it's always to defend something like what they call the uh, honor of the family, the dignity it's of the outcome. It's the outcome. Yeah. It's the outcome of what happens around us. Yes. Life. Okay. All right. So. Yes. There is so much analogy to what you are telling. Yes, yes. This story, what, a lot of analogy to, to what we are surrounded by. And there are so, so many aspects of our life. This, is, this never changed. The, the feeling of love was always there and everything that has to do with it. It's never yeah, changed. But, but he speaks well, about, let's say, David, you know, willing to give up the power, who almost like don't have a sense of entitlement that every... So, and everybody thinks he's entitled to, to the power and to the, you know. Oh, yes, yes. And, and they, they, uh, they estimate power as a supreme value. I don't yes. think that power should be considered a supreme value. Right. Love is a different story. I mean, uh, I think that love is life. Life is love. And uh, wherever you uh, give up uh, on love and prefer other values, so to speak, life becomes very miserable yes. and, uh, and I think that this is what, uh, what uh, I, the, the lesson I drew from uh, the story of King David and which I try to share with our audience. We shall see how they react, I don't know. Uh, but um, I think that uh, Batsheva in that sense, she's uh, one of the, maybe she's the epitome of the free woman in yes. ancient times you know she takes a bath outside in her courtyard knowing that king david <laughs> is on the roof right. and uh, <laughs> uh, well there is something there uh, between the two of them and uh, it is beautiful actually yeah it, uh, you know it, something it, I, in, in being able to open yourself and expose yourself in which i think she bears probably bathing herself kind of tenderly it's not like we don't you know what know. I mean? I, 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 yeah. I have to, I have, you know, that's the power of drama. But he the, writes it and we... The, but the mm -hmm. definition of power has uh, all kinds of sides because the power of love is very different. The power of uh, uh, governing is very different. And you choose which one gives you more power in, to your life, you know, in a sense of What's more important? What do I really want? No, that's and, what everybody, I'm about. and everybody's using it in a very different way, not always positive, but you know, it's but we choose. I mean, we, yeah, we can we choose. choose, we can yeah. choose what he says. Yeah. We can well, choose uh, how we want to perceive life, how we want yeah, to, sure. to uh, uh, build the, the foundations of, of our lives. But did you write only about Michal and Bachiva or? Yeah, I, I decided to take the first love and the last love. I mean, the two of them. And uh, what a difference when, what he was, when he was. Pardon? What? And what about Jonathan? Ah, Jonathan. Uh, he appears also in the uh, in the middle of this of this uh, uh, theatrical event, so to speak. And David uh, apologizes to him. He says, "Well, you don't. You know." He says, "Your love was." which means uh, your love was more wondrous for me Amazing. than the love of women. And uh, then I added one line, which doesn't appear in the Bible, where he says, I'm so sorry that I never said one word of love to you. Because in the Bible, we don't find that uh, yeah. it was a reciprocated love. We hear that Jonathan loved David and David somehow did not reciprocate. Right. He, uh, well, he allowed Jonathan to love him. Um, with, with Michal, it's interesting because I think it's, she's the only woman in the Bible about whom it is said that she loved David, or a woman who loved uh, the man. Usually why it's so the man who loved the woman. Yeah, why do so, you think it's yeah. so real? Why do you think it's so real? To, to Why is it, is it so rare in the in the Bible? Bible. Because, because the woman will, at that time she was not entitled to uh, to to love and to follow her uh, her emotions or her emotional. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? It existed until the late nineteenth century or twentieth. Well, in some places in the world, they still are not entitled. 
they are not entitled. But in the in the Bible, it is said, but to have Michal at David, but to have Michal but Shaul at David. And what does Shaul say? He says, okay, I will give her to him, but it will lead to his death. Why? Because uh, then uh, Shaul says to David, if you, well, uh, I don't want any uh, dot, how, uh, mohar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, what you pay, what you pay when you get ready. What you pay when you take yeah. I, I, I want you to bring me a hundred uh, foreskins of Philistines. A nice. hundred foreskins of Philistines. And uh, Yoav comes to, to David and he says to him, listen, <laughs> he wants you to die. How are you going to cut off a hundred foreskins of Philistines? And David says, well, yeah, you are right. We will not cut a uh, hundred foreskins, we will mm. cut 200. And he brings to King Shaul 200 foreskins of Philistines. Uh, so, well. <laughs> what do you think uh, about it? Listen, for you, wait a minute, for you, it's a test. Yeah. Uh, you, Yoshua Sobol, yes. um, walking around, I don't know how to say it, the lanes of life all over the world, expressing yourself wherever you can, uh, mm -hmm. whether people listen to you or not, you still voice your voice. How do you react to something like this to bring these 200, whatever, tzatzkes to? <laughs> Tzatzkes, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, the truth is that uh, probably David uh, did love Michal. She loved him and he loved her. It, it looks like uh, there was a very reciprocated love. Uh, and uh, the Philistines were enemies at that time. They were deadly enemies. Finally, they killed uh, King Saul and uh, they, uh, they um, drove out uh, the Jews from the cities where they lived and they took over. Uh, they made a kind of uh, mm -hmm. ethnic um, yeah, cleansing, cleansing yeah. Uh, the Philistines. So they were a deadly enemy. By the way, they were uh, foreigners. They came from uh, Creta, uh, mm -hmm. the Philistines. They were not uh, natives of. Uh, so let's come to the You know, we have a uh, minister well, well, of well, call them Satan. Yeah, they, but they, you uh, know, the immigrants. Uh, I think that uh, what what uh, the story in the Bible uh, wants to say that David had a kind of funny sense of humor sometimes. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, he says, you want 100, I will bring you to 100. I understand that you want me to get killed during that campaign. Okay, then I will uh, double the, uh, so to speak, the price. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, well, I. It's not this but is... you know, Joshua, usually yeah. you protest because you protest against what's going on for yes. decades. And now I hear another voice. You're not protesting about what's been done and the test that was given to David, and you try to to hug it in a in a romantic way to justify it. what happened yeah what happened well what happened no it, uh, i'm still uh, uh, i i still consider myself not as a dissident this is for others to say if i am or if i'm not yeah. um i was opposed to what happened in the last uh, years of uh, netanyahu's uh, rule um because i felt that um I felt it was obvious that uh, things were going the wrong way. Anyway, um, but what you say about my maybe becoming more moderate or whatever, no, it's, it has to do with the fact that in the last uh, 10 years or so, we saw wars raging around us in the Arab world. And we saw things happening there that are Mm, uh, similar to uh, genocide. Yes. What happened? Yeah. What happened in yeah. Syria? Yes. They are now uh, a whole or in people. In, or in Tate, at Yemen, at, you know. Or in Yemen, or in Iraq, also, right. and yeah. and uh, uh, in other countries uh, where where the um, orthodox or not the 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 the, the, um, the ex extreme uh, the zealots of the of other religions islam among others 
they are causing catastrophes to the people. Yes. Catastrophes. Absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, and so I think that, um, first of all, because it took place in the last 10 years in our uh, region, um, I reconsider Israel as a place where there is a certain degree of normalcy. Normalcy. After all, we survived four campaigns of uh, elections in one year or yeah. two years, which could uh, shatter any democracy. Yes. You know, and the, the campaigns were n far from being very neat. They were, uh, they were aggressive. They were sometimes uh, unpleasant, very unpleasant. Somehow our democracy survived it. And what happened now in Israel is that eight different parties yes. that have uh, uh, almost nothing with one another in common right. uh, got together. Everyone gave up his uh, principles, his, uh, I would say, the things that separate them from one another, and they tried to find the common. And, and the it common sounds genuine. Was, and it looks it, it and sounds genuine. completely it, it genuine. Is, it is genuine. Yes. And I think that uh, they all... Uh, all the members of this coalition, of this very, very weird coalition, shared the uh, anxiety of many citizens, among them myself, yes. that uh, we are in the facing a danger that our democracy will uh, collapse. Right. I'm, I'm, and I'm... so you had to now to be, because during the Netanyahu's campaign, uh, he attacked the judiciary. He attacked the institutions, the basic institutions right. of society. So uh, I think that uh, in Hebrew, there is a word, a uh, uh, notion of tikkun. Right. You know it, tikkun, yes. repairing. Yeah. yeah. Repairing what should be repaired. And I think and even though, we have... Even if we think it, it's, it cannot be amended, it can be. Yeah. Right. We, be can we have be. to believe it, you know. We have a yes. common friend, Alisa yes. Olmert, who is doing broken eggs that she meant together. And she saw that we can mend broken eggshell even. Yes, right? yes, you can you can make of them a, a, a work of art right. oh, from yeah. the broken yes, but, eggshells. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the question if it can be in real. Well, it, it is to redeem something of the quality of the eggshell. Right. Um, no, 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 but, but the question uh, now, you know, it's almost like, almost a wishful thinking that it's not just a work of art, but maybe it can be done with like the example reality. of the new government of those eight Well, I will tell you something. Uh, my daughter, Neta, uh, she was an actress and then she decided to study uh, Jewish philosophy and oh. she made she wrote her doctorate in Kabbalah oh. uh, on a special uh, uh, subject of the Zohar. And, She's not uh, allowed to as a woman, right? She's not allowed no, to. Well, women uh, are not allowed to study Zohar. Uh, no, they are not allowed. Write about so, it. so she uh, she sinned, so to speak. Yeah. She wrote a doctorate yeah. about the. Uh, well, and uh, one of the things that um, I learned from her is that in the Kabbalah, what, what, there is a notion of uh, that God, by creating the world, uh, he made clear his own imperfection. Because if he was a perfect being, he would not need to create anything. Right. If you are perfect, you don't need to move a finger. You can just uh, enjoy your perfection. You can relax, yeah. yeah. And so he, he needed something. So you mean he, God has he, doubts? Well, not that he has doubts. He, he is a, a, a flawed being. He is not a perfect being. But he's aware uh, of it? Uh, of course, because otherwise he wouldn't create men in his image, men, I mean, the human being in yeah, his yeah. image, and the role of us human beings, according to that, uh, that uh, topic in the Kabbalah, is to repair or to amend what God uh, created. When it doesn't uh, happen, he sent Noah and to, you know, send Noah but, and flooded the world, like maybe. Yeah, it, it's another story also in the Kabbalah that uh, they, they say about God that he, I'll say it in Hebrew, Bore Olamotu Machrivan. Okay, he's creating he the world, world and then he destroys world them. And destroys them. Are we there? And, which means he's doing it uh, almost uh, 
consistently. On, on, a, on a constant basis. <laughs> and every world that he creates is a kind of a blueprint. It is not what he wanted really to create. What's so happening now? Sure, look. You it's look so around. We are almost. Yeah. Are we going yeah. into the destruction of the third? Now, now, while we speak. While we speak. Uh, first of all, uh, the third temple was not built yet. Uh, I mean, I, and I hope that it will not be built because, because um, we saw what happened when the te second temple was there. It became the biggest steakhouse of the ancient world. Uh, the, the the second okay, temple. Yeah. But uh, do you think you know, we need a third no. temple when we have the, the state of Israel? No, I don't think we need it. Okay. I, I think we don't need it. I think that uh, Judaism, the great merit or the great uh, advantage of Judaism is uh, of its being a spiritual religion. It right. doesn't need any um, right. stones or any monuments or any um, I don't know what uh, uh, official institutions, even their uh, rabbis, uh, are a, a kind of an invention that uh, happened during a certain point, but in our history. But uh, the, the Talmud says he's there, Marabanot. But if you take it a little bit further, so mm -hmm. do you think that the Jewish state should exist? Oh, yes. Don't you oh, yes. look at this no, no, place? No, no. Look at, look at him. So, one of the things but, that I asked you that I really mm. wanted to talk to him. Because yes. many times, you know, I look at people and there is a drawer in me that I would like either to open or to feel like you are all around the world and we'll also get in Germany, but yes. yet you are only you cannot be away from Israel. No, I, I could. I could no, if I, no, I mean if I wanted. If you want to, of course, don't speak about yeah, it. There was a, a moment in my private biography when um, Ghetto was produced, my play Ghetto, all over yes. the world. To okay. this day, yes. um, there is always a production of Ghetto somewhere. Yes. Uh, two years ago, before just before the corona broke out, I directed a production of Ghetto in Beijing oh. with a, a Chinese theater, and oh. uh, they played it in 24 towns in China, throughout China. So I, I and at the time, in 1989, Ghetto was produced in the National Theatre in London and received Best Play of the Year um, well, it award. A play. So I, I could stay in London at that time, and I was almost offered the opportunity to do it. And it was very tempting because, um, well, you know, you get the Best Play of the Year in London, it's not... Um, yes, it's, it's, it's huge. Serious, it is not it's huge, huge, it's huge, 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 yeah. yeah. And then I decided to to go back to Israel. I um, it was after I was have been living for almost four years in London. Why? Uh, because why? Because I my play the Jerusalem Syndrome that opened in eighty eight right. at the Haifa Theatre created a nationwide yeah. scandal. I remember. Right. And I had to retire from my job as artistic director of the theatre. Yes. And then uh, I there were nice people who came to me and said, "Don't don't." Uh, retire, don't get, uh, I mean, stay in the theater. Don't leave your position, just stay. Do, uh, just uh, take two seasons to produce oh. uh, unoffensive uh, stuff and uh, comedies, etc., musicals, and then people will forget. And then after two years, you can uh, again do your Michel okay. Gass, you know, your uh, crazy things. Yeah. And I, I said, as an artist, I feel that if I yeah. make this compromise, it's the right. end of my. Uh, but of, of Joshua, can you please uh, you know, I, I, tell yeah. us in two words about the Jerusalem syndrome and two words about uh, ghetto because not everybody knows. Yeah, that. all right. Uh, of course. Uh, shall we start with the Jerusalem syndrome? I'll tell you what yeah, it's yeah. all about. The Jerusalem syndrome is a play about a, um, a future uh, Gog and Magog uh, war, the uh, Armageddon, mm -hmm. yeah, in the <laughs> Christian uh, tradition where everything is destroyed and the, the, the last battle is taking place in Jerusalem. And the uh, um, uh, psychiatric hospital is being bombed out and all the inmates uh, find themselves uh, on the street. And the crazy professor, who was also an inmate of, the, of that uh, asylum, uh, puts on a show with the inmates of the lunatic asylum 
lunatic asylum, it's incorrect to say it nowadays, but um, never mind. <laughs> it's <okay>. Mentally. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, he puts on a show with them, uh, uh, telling the story of the destruction of the Second Temple. And uh, uh, according to his uh, uh, theory, the temple was, uh, I mean, this temple and the Jewish independence was lost because the zealots uh, took over the control over the state of Israel. Right. And this was the message of the play. It was... Yeah, sure, the narrative people, was clear. Yeah, it was clear. And uh, the extreme right wing understood it very well. So they made not only a, pro a protest, but they tried right. to, uh, to, to blow up the show. We right. opened it at the Habima Theater in Tel Aviv, in, and, uh, in the National Theater. And the people started to, uh, to shout, to scream, and someone uh, threw uh, an alarm bomb into the auditorium. Uh, the police had to interfere, I don't know how many times, and they throw out some 100 people out of the auditorium. Yeah, and then um, uh, the, the, uh, no one was very favorable to the play. The people were very critical about it. Um, and the uh, uh, board of directors of the Haifa Theater uh, which is depending on the municipality oh. of Haifa, they came and they said, listen, you cannot go on with this, with this that kind of place. Uh, people don't like it, and uh, we don't like it. So uh, this was a, a critical moment for me, and I said, okay, then I will uh, give up. I will resign from the post of artistic director, and I became an independent writer. Right. And uh, that uh, I, I was lucky enough because it, uh, sh shortly afterwards I got a message from London that the National Theatre wanted to do a production of Ghetto. So I said, okay, then I will go to London and I will take some distance from, mm -hmm. from the arena in Israel because I felt that if I'm staying, <laughs> I will be involved in a kind of non-stopping battle with the people right. who accused me and so on and so forth. I said, I will take a certain distance and so on. So this was the story of the Jerusalem Syndrome. And uh, then um, you asked me about Ghetto. Ghetto is a play based on uh, historical uh, uh, documents and uh, material about a theater that functioned uh, in the uh, uh, Ghetto of Vilnius, of Vilna, uh, during the Second World War. Um, the, uh, the Germans uh, gave a permission to to open a theater in the ghetto. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. they were, they, it was for them even entertainment. There was a German officer by the name of uh, Hans Kittel, um, who was a young man. He was 22 years old. Uh, he was in charge of the ghetto at a certain point. And he was um, a, an amateur of ja jazz music and himself a player of saxophone. And he was a... Uh, an uh, alumni of a uh, drama school. So he was interested in the theater in the ghetto and he was he used to come with his saxophone and uh, play so jazz. The, then, Pardon? If you had to say in one sentence, what is the intent of the play? Of the, the play, I will, I, I'll try to say it in one sentence. It's the, of the importance of art and spiritual resistance when you are uh, put, uh, you are uh, confronted with, uh, with annihilation, with a project of annihilation. So it is about and the spirit so, of human being. Right? It, it's the important. In the middle of the, the wars, the wars, catastrophe of yeah. the lowest, to the lowest of human, humanity. You should yes, yes, so, find it easier to tell a story when you put a, a show inside a show or a story inside a story? Does it make it easier to bring the message? Um, it offers you, of course, a kind of, a, you, it offers you a double point of view on, on a certain subject. Right. From the inside and from the outside at the same time. So in ghetto, it, it, it starts with the, the memory of a survivor of the ghetto, who, is, uh, who was uh, the artistic director of the theater in the ghetto. And um, he survived. 
and he remembers the story of the theater and he brings it to life for us. And uh, among other things, we, we see there, it, it is a play that deals with all the dilemma, not all, sorry, with some of the crucial dilemmas uh, that uh, people had to face, like the uh, doctors, the ghetto, uh, had, at a certain point had to face the dilemma if they are going to um, uh, give insulin injections to every uh, case of uh, um, uh, uh, yeah. diabetes. Diabetes. diabetes, or they will start a selection among patients because they came to the conclusion that if they con continue to deal out the uh, insulin without selection, after three yeah. weeks or so, they will finish the whole. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so this was a terrible um, Horse dilemma. Um, dilemma to face. I met, by the way, the young doctor. When I met him, he was not young anymore, who had to face this dilemma because he was responsible for the pharmacy of the hospital in the ghetto. Then um, Grenz, the leader of the ghetto, at a certain point, they came to him and uh, I mean the Germans, and they said uh, we want a selection of children. And he said to them, uh, "Well, the children will grow up. You have founded uh, a Reich uh, kingdom that will last for thousand years. You will need their uh, human, their manpower." Right. So, what's uh, the alternative? He said, "Well, take old people." Instead of the young of the of the children, and the, the German officer, this is documented, said to him, "You know, there is a difference of value between the life of a child and the life of an old man." And Gans said to him, "Yeah, this difference can be calculated in money." And the German officer said, "You said it." So Gans tells the story that he put his hand into his deep pocket, he drew out a wad of bills, and offered it to the German officer. And the German officer said, "Okay." So let's make a selection of old people. Yeah. And Gens says himself, he says, uh, he was the leader of the ghetto, he said, I know that this uh, decision of mine, or yeah, or this, um, yeah, was immoral. It cannot be defended morally. And he said, but I, we are not living in a time in a moral world, yeah. Yeah. where the morals Maybe. count anymore. Maybe. So he said, we have to, 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 to uh, to take responsibility for the future of our nation, of our, of our you almost used the biological term of species. Mm -hmm. And said, so when you have to deal with that problem, you must, uh, uh, you must uh, prefer the survival of the youngsters and give up the life of the old people. So- What, a, what an incredible, that, painful dilemma. Yeah, but these are the kind of dilemmas that come up in yes. ghetto, in the play, in the yes, play. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. But you and know, so, I, uh, yeah. Yes. No, no, no. I, I just, I, I just wanted to ask you also, if I may, uh, how you, what is your attitude to Germany? Because you go to Germany, you, you many you times. Up, I, I, many well, ta I'm yes, sure I people recently, asked you because of I, course, of course, because I. I'm not you, and of course I cannot even compare to you, but I refuse to go to Germany unless I have a film in the festival, like Berlin Festival, yeah. which yeah. have questions for them. Yes. Well, uh, Ghetto, yes, it was my first play produced in Germany. Yes. And it was produced parallelly with the production in Haifa in 84, 1984. Uh, at the same time, it opened, we opened in Haifa, the Hebrew, Mm. Uh, premier and uh, Peter Zadek, the famous director, opened in Berlin at that time, uh, the German uh, performance of Ghetto. And of course, okay. I, was, I was criticized by some people who thought that uh, we should boycott Germany. No, but I ask you how you feel about it. How I feel about it. I felt, and I said it openly in, in um, interviews at the time, that we have, we Jews and especially we Israelis, <coughs> among, Jew, among all Jews, have two uh, partners for a serious dialogue. One is the Palestinians and the other one is the Germans. Oh. And we have to, to um, 
to conduct the dialogue with them. Wow, okay, so I'm, right. I'm, 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 you look, it took me a second to think mm. about that maybe I was wrong. Well, I don't think you are wrong. I think that everyone has to make his own decision in right. such a uh, in such a choice. I never thought about it through. this way. About I didn't see it as a dialogue. Unfortunately, I saw it. I, as, it look at the mirror. As, yeah, I came as a ktava as a, a, a blaming, which is called the wrong way of. Yeah, no, I can't. Well, you, you know, I, I'll tell you something. I had uh, after the premiere in Berlin, I was interviewed by many journalists and so on. And a, a young journalist, a woman, came to me. I think she was then maybe twenty-eight or so, and she said to me, uh, she be began the interview by saying, "You know that we are all guilty," and I said to her sorry, you cannot be guilty. She said, what? I said, you were born after the war. You can't take responsibility for, for what, uh, then. What, yeah. what brought about the, uh, the, 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 the um, taking of power by the Nazis. And if these are still forces that are uh, under undercurrents in the German society, you should take responsibility to uh, struggle against it with all your forces if you want to take responsibility, but don't don't go um, don't indulge in feelings of guilt because sometimes uh, feelings of guilt yeah uh, are uh, neutralizing you. Right. Yeah, well, then you go to us, yeah, you say okay, I feel guilty and uh, yeah, and I cannot confront it. I cannot do anything. I'm going Listen, to. You open my eyes. I want to thank you. No, I'm not kidding now. Because no, the I, notion, well, I, that if I want to understand the complexity of yes. the Israeli-Palestinian conflict or the complexity yeah. of Nazism, yes, I want to understand it. If I'm not trying to understand the complexity, then it, it's nothing. It doesn't no, cause no. anything. Then I do have to make a, di a dialogue with of both. Course. Places, of course, a dialogue. Because I and yes, my, yes. my films are either so, you know, the Holocaust or the Palestinian conflict and a little bit Unfortunately, too little yeah. battered women. But if I would like to be honest with myself, I need to, to make a dialogue, not just between me and myself and my characters. You know, uh, I, I wrote oh. a, no a novel that uh, was published in Israel three years ago. It's called in Hebrew, Chofshat Shichor, which means um, uh, there is no, no parallel notion in English, I think, to Chofshat Shichor. It's when you are released from the army. Yeah, and it's about a young girl who is being released from the army. She was uh, an interrogator of uh, of uh, terrorists, and um, and she goes to the kibbutz where her grandfather uh, lives. He is not at home. He's a man almost of in his uh, late eighties. She wants to talk to him, and then she finds there the diary of his mother, which is her grand grandmother right. who was one among the founders of the kibbutz and she was a choreographer this woman by the name of eva doesn't matter uh, and uh, sh this eva she was one of these women who who i would say uh, uh, created or well, was among the the women who have uh, uh, reformed the status of women in Judaism and in Israel, especially in the 20s, by trying to make, to create a, a society of the kibbutz, of course, where there would be total equality between men and women. And she, as a choreographer, at a certain point, she feels that she needs to uh, bring her art to perfection. And in 1930, the place to do it was Berlin. And she leaves the kibbutz and she goes to Berlin in 1930 wow. to study uh, Ausdruckstanz, uh, the expressionist uh, dance. And uh, there she meets, on one hand, Bertolt Brecht, with whom she has an affair. <laughs> and on the other hand, because he had yeah, affairs with, with, with many. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't know if he was a nice man. Wait, I'm not sure. Well, he was not but such a nice man, by the way. It, you know, it's like so some of know, the great artists was... like him, like Fassbinder, they were not nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, well, he, by the way, he took advantage of the women who loved him and he exploited them. Uh, well, like sometimes Picasso, very, Picasso. very nastily, very nastily. Uh, anyway, on the other hand, she meets also a young architect by the name of Johan. 
uh, who is a young Nazi? And uh, at that point in 1913, the Nazis were not yet, you know, they were yeah. not in power. They were, And she as a very free woman, she has her uh, love affairs with, on the one hand with uh, Brecht, on the other hand with this Johann. And, and at the be in the beginning, she falls into the trap that people like Bernard Shaw fell into them by admiring uh, the National Socialist Party uh, with its ideals, et cetera, et cetera, that brought order and law into the German society and so on. And uh, until she has her, um, um, until she understands what is taking place there and she goes back to uh, Israel, on the way trying to bring her parents from Vienna to Israel and they don't want to listen. She says to them, come now, but because in a, few, in a, in a couple of years, you will uh, be kicked out of your home and of your uh, property and everything. They don't want to listen to her. They say, you are a crazy Zionist, you are a crazy uh, socialist Zionist, etc." And she goes back and she comes and she becomes involved in, in, the, in the Second World War when, yeah, a Jews of German uh, origin created a force in the Palmach, in the Israeli Haganah, in the Israeli Defense Force, a German section or German regiment. They prepare themselves for the occupation of Palestine by Rommel, by the German army. Right. There were 200 days of uh, anxiety where it was not clear that the English are going right. to win the battle in the yeah. desert. Yeah. And then uh, this woman becomes, uh, she's sent by the British after the victory over Rommel, she's sent to Egypt to interrogate uh, German uh, prisoners of war. And she meets that Johan, whom oh, who the was, one, uh, yeah, okay. but now he's a prisoner of war. Right. And he tells her that uh, there was a, a plan a re prepare, prepared for the extermination of the Jewish, the Israeli Hebrew issue in Palestine. Yeah. It, it is a, a historical fact. They prepared a special force in Greece that was waiting for the occupation of Palestine by the German army in order to come over to wipe out and, the and yeah. to wipe out the Jewish uh, community in Palestine that counted 500,000, 600,000 yeah. people. Right. Right. Um, now, the, the, the novel was translated into German and they gave it a very interesting title. They call it uh, The Great Wind of Time, mm. the Große Winter Zeit. Right. And the, the uh, municipal theater in Stuttgart, they read the, the book and they contacted me. They said, we want you to make a play about, uh, based on the book. Like. So at yeah, this moment, I'm writing a play about it. I mean, now? a play based, based on the book, yes, yes. For the theater of Stuttgart. Now, this is a kind of dialogue because um, in the play, well, what comes out from the book at least, and I, I hope I'll manage to squeeze it into the play because it's a very, uh, it's a kind of saga in the book. Um, the fact that Zionism was the right answer to Nazism, that this was the, uh, the only, I would say, movement inside the Jewish world that for, for so and understood what was in store for us and, uh, and to the last, very last moment, Jews in Austria, in Germany, before they were really kicked out or sent to the camps, still believed that this could not happen. Yeah. So uh, the, the play has to do, and the book also, with the fact that uh, in the last few years, you know, there is a tendency in the Western world, I'm sorry to say, to which the left wing is also sometimes uh, yeah. connected to uh, w vilify Zionism as a um, colonialist, imperialist, etc. All these. Uh, yes. Um, what is it? 
something jumped up. Yeah, can you? Uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, and, but wait a minute, so you, when you start to write a play, by the way, how many plays you wrote? 40 more? How many no, plays? I wrote 80, 84. 80, 84? <laughs> yeah. Either life? Do you have any life uh, outside writing? Uh, yeah, I do have. Yes, yes. Oh. Well, I know your son you know, who is amazing. I know your daughter. I know oh, your yeah, uh, he is I amazing. Of course, I know daughter. your, uh, how you call it, Kala, daughter in law who acted it yeah. fabulously. Yeah. And I waited, I'm waiting for the film to come out. But listen, what yeah. I, do you start with a what if, or do you ask with a question you want to understand? Like, but before but, that, I wanted to ask you, Joshua. We are, we are like I, I'm fighting on. for time, right? No, it, um, when. The dialogue with the Germans and the dialogue with the Palestinians, which way you focus about the future and which way you focus about the past? How do He's you run this dialogue? He's doing both now. He's doing both now. Well, well I, I think that uh, the past uh, is full of mistakes in, uh, between us and the Palestinians on both sides. I, I think they are as responsible as we are to the Nakba. And I think that it would be very. You don't very know what healthy. is the Nakba. The Nakba is the it's the, the, um, the Palestinian, Palestinian so speak, uh, catastrophe. Right. Yeah. yeah the, the, um, I think that uh, shaking off all responsibility for the for the Nakba for their uh, catastrophe doesn't do them any good. And I'm a left winger in Israel, yeah. and yeah. I think that. Uh, and not only in Israel, but I think that uh, understanding history is so important and to understand what and why they uh, manipulated themselves, I mean, the Palestinians, to this catastrophe which befell them. It is, for them, it is crucial to, impo to, to understand it. Well, to acknowledge, and, you and, mean more to, to, to acknowledge? To, no, to, to acknowledge and to understand. Because we and don't because acknowledge. I, I know. I know it's so easy to well it is so easy to throw uh, to uh, unload your responsibility on others okay. for mainly for catastrophes that one causes to oneself we always look for someone else who is uh, guilty for us and I, so i think that we have to take responsibility also for what oh. we have done yes and of course because we are now the the the, 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 the the I would say the stronger party. The occupier. It is it is up to us to first of all to recognize the right for uh, independence. Do you see signs for it? Do you see any sign that I, it can happen? I, I think I think it will happen. I think it will happen because there is no other. The solution of one state is uh, unviable. Right. The differences of uh, culture. Right. Of, re of religion and of habits and so on. I don't want to impose on the Palestinians our ideals of uh, right. equality between, uh, between the genders. I think that it's their problem to reach it uh, and to come to, to it. Embrace it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yet, I think that the difference of cultures is so um, mm, uh, sharp that it is almost impossible now when it would, it would be a catastrophe to try to, to impose on the two people uh, one uh, political entity. So I think that um, my, my vision of the future is that there will be an independent Palestinian state alongside with Israel, and then the two states can confederate, they can do uh, all kinds of arrangements which will be necessary for, for for us and for them. Did we miss uh, the train for that? No. We, do we miss? The train. Did we miss the train for that? No. It, no, no. No. I don't think so. I think no, that, uh, that, example, look yeah. at me. Rick, for every man who was really is a leftist, he was a leftist, he was really had a lot of uh, anger. In many ways, you can call it anger about what he, he sees around him. Mm -hmm. And look at him now. You said he became more softer work that's not softer he just look at this new government it's not, arabs it's religious jewish people leftists right wing they all come together it's not a question like of a miracle yeah, yeah yeah but i then think that if you ask if no, we lost the train worry. if we lost what? the train hmm? uh well the again i i can see trends now among israeli arabs of course 
I mean, uh, Israeli Arabs, uh, these are Israeli citizens uh, who define themselves as Palestinians, but they are Israeli citizens. But they have Israeli citizens. And, um, and now th there is a, this trend to start to cooperate with the Jewish community to, right. I mean, of Israel uh, for the good of both parties. Right. I think that it, be, it, it the pressure comes from uh, the uh, from the grassroots, right? Uh, grassroots in that sense that you have now so many uh, medical staff in our hospitals, doctors, uh, right. professors, and uh, nurses, and so Pharmacist. on. Yeah. Well, uh, are now uh, yeah. 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 Um, now in the high tech, there yes. are now. Do you know that there are now between 500 and 1,000 um, uh, high-tech technicians from the Palestinian right. uh, Authority who are working in Israel? Yes. Working in Israel in Israeli uh, enterprises, right. high-tech enterprises. And uh, they, this contact between, and they are all, of course, young people. Uh, so this contact on a daily basis in the field of uh, uh, medicine, in the field of high-tech, in other fields, of course, it will finally change the I, I, old... I think you are right. Yeah. Yeah. You see, when you say he was such a voice all these years that we know him, right? Such a voice. Um, now it's a different voice that he should, he should really it's, go go out, you know? The, because, it's almost as an analogy. He's walking. Because Joshua is a thinker and he writes about it all the time. And it's very organic and he sees what's going on and he changes, you know, his ideas in a very deep way. But, you know, after so many years of protesting, do you see any influence or any change with uh, people around you that really willing to make any difference or any? This government. No. It's yeah, not... yeah, well, before this government, you know, there was a, a moment when uh, Ehud Olmert was uh, prime minister. I mean... uh, he had a, he offered uh, right. Mahmoud Abbas, right. uh, Abu Mazen, a, a deal. And if Mahmoud Abbas had signed at that time right. the yeah. deal, there would have already been a, a kind right. of uh, right. Palestinian yeah. state. Right. Uh, he was afraid to sign it. He re somehow refused. I think there were some Israeli politicians who told him that uh, Olmert is probably going to be uh, overthrown. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so it was a historical moment when I know. Happened. And look at the journey of Lord Olmert where he started. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he was a, he's a Likud, he was a Likudnik. Yes. And and, and now he's uh, with his uh, his opinions about the solution right. for the conflict mm -hmm. right. are identical to the uh, the uh, attitudes of the of the left wing in okay. Israel. You know, it's really funny. Yeah. I, I have to stick my nose as a woman. You know, I I do believe that Aliza, his wife, yeah. was some kind of a in back course. channel back channel uh, influence on him. Well, I, I would like to believe so. I think that uh, it's it's time for all men to be influenced by women. I believe it. I have yeah. like, I'm really too late to ask. No, no, I, 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 I do believe it. I really believe it because I think we started talking about power and the thirst for power and so on and holding on to power. This is a kind of masculine um, uh, psychosis. Right. I mean, the need to have power. Right. And I think the uh, the female power is kind of soft power. It's a, a different attitude. It is not uh, giving up totally a power, but it is another way of dealing with it and of uh, of using it. Right. So I don't I think know that, that it's are... a soft power. I think it's a wider power that has more departments into it, and you play because there are many women who are not soft and very. Very, no, of course. but I think also, it has a wider range of uh, options of dealing with things. An emotional range. And the ability an, to an deal with things at once. And uh, yes, and I think that uh, now the female intelligence has to do also, it, it is an emotional intelligence also, be, besides being also intellectual intelligence, of course. But I think that men in uh, the Western uh, civilization and uh, probably in other cultures 
um, they, are, they, they lack that uh, openness to their emotional being. Right. And that's why they are kind of suppressing their emotional right. being. Right. right. The by suppressing right. it, it's really who they are, actually, because they, they have were educated an like this. They're limited. They're limited. Because they're, nobody actually. Of course, they miss it. Of course. And I think that to, nowadays, if you. Uh, uh, we see that uh, it's only if you use your full intelligence, not only your brainy being, but also your emotional. Uh, uh, capacity to identify with, uh, with others and to empathy, uh, which computers don't have and right. robots don't have. And this is the big difference between, uh, I would say, uh, what the human society has to adopt. You just sent me to a different question. What, are we going to design a, the AI, artificial intelligence, according to men or women? I never thought about it, but listen, we don't have much time, but I did want to ask you if you can answer me shortly. Yes. Um, do you think that men evilness is more dominant? Humans, evil, evil yeah. or goodness? Well, well, I think so. I think that we see it. Uh, look, I'm looking around me and I see who are these uh, hordes of People who run with guns on the, in the streets and shout and scream, death, death, death. It's always men. You don't see yeah. thousands of women running with weapons on the streets and shouting yeah. death. So uh, there is a culture of uh, adoration of death. And uh, we have to get rid of it, the humankind, because, because we have now in our hands the means to destroy the whole universe. We have it. Yes. And uh, if you uh, if you go on with that uh, tendency of um, of uh, adoring the, um, uh, the, the, the 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 military militant attitude of males, young males, uh, I, I would say young frustrated males yes. running in the streets with guns in their hands, and instead of. Uh, oh. uh, Adoring life, they adore death. Right. Then it's the end of the of but your listen, but, here, but here we are with you, writing yes. about the power of love, and actually coming and tell us David was a vulnerable man, who was he actually was vulnerable. vulnerable. Yeah, yeah. In he a was way. vulnerable. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he was not afraid to bring out his vulnerability. Is 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 being able to love. And well, this is actually, yeah. it's unbelievable that you are writing now, you're coming out with such, <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, yeah. you give us hope, yeah. you give us hope in, 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 in spite of what you just told right. us. You give us hope. Listen, it was a delight. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I we enjoyed did. it very much. Yes, I didn't even feel that the time was passing. So, well, uh, yeah, you know, because here we, we have are. To, you have to uh, excuse me for having talked so, so much. No, 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 that's why just we had you it. will know that we, we want are to, okay. to do it. And we are doing this show because we would like to be inspired. We are looking for okay. information All in right. the world. Therefore, we ask you to come here. Anyway. Silly. Thank you so much, thank Joshua. You so much. Thanks, CP. Thank you. And uh, it was a pleasure. You, you will have a link to the... Sure. Um, You'll get it. You'll get it. And I'll get it. Go you. your son too. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good, good, good. See everybody next week. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.